Hello. As the Chief Judge of the County Court, I am proud to introduce this video presentation. It explains the work of the County Koori Court and its elders and respected persons. An important aim of the Koori Court is to address the systematic disadvantage faced by Aboriginal people within the criminal justice system. Historically, many Aboriginal people have had a deep distrust of the law. Aboriginal offenders and their families have often found mainstream court proceedings alienating and isolating. An important aspect of the Koori Court is to break down those perceptions. The Koori Court ensures equal access to the law by providing a fairer process while applying the same law. Koori Courts were first established in Victoria following recommendations made by the Royal Commission into Aboriginal Deaths in Custody. The Koori Court is a community-led development in partnership with the Court. Its existence is enshrined in legislation. We commenced sitting in the Latrobe Valley 10 years ago. Five years later, we expanded to Melbourne, then to Mildura in 2016, Shepparton in 2018, and only late last year, in November, we expanded to Warrnambool. We plan to continue to expand the court throughout regional Victoria. Crucially, the County Koori Court results in better engagement with the criminal justice system for Aboriginal people. It helps offenders address the underlying causes of their offending and so helps prevent re-offending, which in turn protects the community. Catherine, we commence every sittings in this division in the usual way by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land upon which we meet and I pay my respects to the Elders past and present. Um, this is a court that does respect Aboriginal people and culture and you would notice the flags and the artworks on display. And when this courtroom was opened, a very important thing happened. The room was smoked according to tradition and culture and that's important because it means that what we hear about today is about fresh beginnings and the fact that the room's been smoked enables that to occur. I was born on an Aboriginal mission and there I seen old men sitting around a campfire talking to young people about the changes they should and could make in their lives. So I take that from those days on the mission seeing that to sitting at the conversation table in the county court. The Koori Court is that cultural understanding of the person sitting in front of you. It's about them making the right choices. It's about them taking ownership of their own life. We're very lucky to have these courts. Our people, they have the opportunity to come here and sit at the table with our elders and our judges and let them know why they did what they did. And we help them. This is what the benefit is that we give them the opportunity and the chance to better themselves too. Sitting there as an elder or a respected person, I think it's very important because it's showing leadership for community. It's showing also that I have the cultural knowledge and understanding of the participants sitting in front of me. It's understanding the complexity of their trauma and how do I heal them Curry courts, this is the best thing since sliced bread, let me tell you. When I worked in the adult system, there was none of this. There was one Aboriginal welfare person that serviced all prisons in Victoria, and that was very, very difficult. You know, I've seen the changes. Having Curry courts, it's just marvellous. In my community, there's not a lot of elders around to pass a lot of the knowledge of the old people on. And so it's important for me as a county court elder, to sit opposite them and tell them how they could change. Can we do things better? Can we take a step back and have another look at how we're doing things? I'm hoping that I'm inspiring these young ones within my community to step up to the plate, become a leader within your own right. 
but also making sure that they've got the right tools they need to get there. So I think that's very important as an elder and a respected person, encouraging them to have that voice. Give that person hope. I like to try and give that person hope because it's important. And that's it, that good word, hope. Hi Catherine, I'm Shirley, I'm a Rajri girl and I'm here as the Koori Court Officer for today. The role of the Koori Court Officer plays an integral part in the County Koori Court process. They work very closely with the judge in charge of the Koori Court, the judges who sit in Koori Court, Aboriginal elders, prosecution, defence lawyers, but more importantly uh, they work very closely with the people who are appearing before the court to ensure that they are well supported in the court process. The County Koori Court deals with breaches of court orders, appeals and most commonly pleas. The Koori Court process is a three-stage one. Formal arraignment, sentencing conversation and formal sentence. Catherine has elected to participate in Koori Court and has been found culturally eligible according to the criteria set out in the Act. To be found culturally eligible to participate in Koori Court, a person must be of Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander descent, identify as Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander and be accepted as such by the community which they associate. The formal arraignment is the first stage of any plea. The court is convened formally with the judge, prosecution, defence counsel and court staff robed. The Koori Court participant stands in the dock and the judge sits on the bench. The judge's associate reads the charges to the participant who is asked to formally enter a plea of guilty or not guilty in open court. How do you plead, Catherine Wood? Are you guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Your Honour, the accused Catherine Wood has pleaded guilty to one charge of aggravated burglary and one charge of causing injury recklessly. Yes, thank you. Take a seat, Miss Woods. Sentencing conversation. After the formal arraignment, the court is momentarily adjourned. The judge, associate and legal practitioners take off their robes and the courtroom is reconfigured so that the sentencing conversation can occur with everyone seated on the same level at the bar table. The conversation flows after the prosecution has outlined the circumstances of the offending and the defence counsel has outlined the factors in mitigation. It is a fluid and dynamic conversation, which is usually initiated by one of our elders and respected persons addressing the participant directly about their offending and inviting them to discuss what has happened and why and to direct the conversation to what can be done in the future to prevent the reoccurrence of the conduct. Just look at you, I can see a lot of potential in you. I really can. And you know, I wish you all the best. I just hope that everything goes the way you want it to go, but you've got to make the effort. I can say to you, I can lead you to water, but I can't make you drink. That's all up to you. And just remember, don't be ashamed to put your hand up and say help. You understand right from wrong in the clear light of day, don't you? You should be at working, enjoying your life. You can't do that smoking marijuana and drinking alcohol. And with that, you lost a good friend who lost respect. And her family that you may have known will lose respect for you as well. Aboriginal society is based on respect. We're slowly losing that, and we've got to claw that back. A distinguishing feature of the sentencing conversation is that any person present in the courtroom, including the Koori Court officer, anyone supporting the participant, as well as victim and anyone else whom the judge considers appropriate, may speak to the judge and the elders and respected persons during the sentencing conversation. In formulating the appropriate sentence, the judge can have regard to what is said in the sentencing conversation. Sentence. Once the sentencing conversation concludes, it is the responsibility of the judge and the judge alone to formulate the sentence according to the law. 
The law applied in Crew Court matters is no different to the law applied in mainstream matters. The court is convened formally with the judge sitting at the bench and counsel for the prosecution and the defence being seated at the bar table for the sentence to be handed down. I consider that in all the circumstances a community correction order is the most appropriate disposition. And what that means is that you're going to be released for 12 months on a, an order that says that you must attend at the community corrections office in Preston and you're subject to their supervision and direction. No way did I ever think that I would end up sitting on the Koori Court here. Our youth, they make me feel so emotional at times. I just love them. I go off with them and I say, I feel like giving you a clip on the ears. But all our people who get themselves into strife, they're all worth everything. I say, everyone deserves a chance. Most of the um, participants that come in front of us, they've lost their identity their culture and they don't know where to go for that help so I think it's very important for us as elders sitting there to have the understanding of where we can connect them back into a safe place and the best part of that is me sitting here as a respected person I'm willing to take that journey with you I'm willing to support you and help you through your journey so it doesn't matter how many times you're going to get it wrong, I'm still going to be there with you and support you. I think focusing on their behaviour is a start for acknowledging the reason why they're here. It's a new beginning as we all know. And I think facing the responsibility of their behaviour makes them want to move forward. And being able to acknowledge the services that can provide that change is very helpful. To me, it's acknowledging who they are, who they belong to, and if perhaps sometimes I do know their families, and I can emphasise a bit of my knowledge towards uh, their family and pass that on, and then have a bit of a conversation about and the impact of his behaviour or her behaviour, what it does have on Aboriginal people. And that's the importance of the Koori Court, is to having that conversation. You behaving like this, you've um, not only offended the Yorta Yorta community, You've also had a ripple effect on Tunnarong. So you know what I'm trying to say, it has a ripple effect on all of us. And it's what society sees us as Aboriginal people. That's, they seem to think that that's normal, everybody does that. And it's not so. It's very important that we talk to the young people about their culture. Culture for me and for most Aboriginal people are a way of life. We're born to it and we pass that on to young people. It's very important, particularly in the courts, so that young people could see that we haven't lost that culture, that it's still there. We had a young person who came in before the elders and the court, didn't know much about his family. I, I lived on the mission and knew his grandfather, who was instrumental in getting land rights back for Aboriginal people on the mission at Lake Ties during the late 60s up to the early 70s. He didn't know that at all. So we adjourned the case and went and found a book with his father and the story of his grandfather. We showed it to him across the desk and then he started to cry, he got very emotional. So those things are happening quite a bit in our courts. Young people have lost their way. They're to understand, we have to go way back being able to acknowledge their Aboriginality and speak about that and connect them back into community. And I, I do emphasise that respect is a, a very important part of our culture, to have respect for yourself and others. And I think by acknowledging their behaviour, it's very important because we've got to look back to be able to look forward. In the Koori Court, it's a much fairer process because the judge gets a better understanding through the involvement with the elders speaking directly to the offender because they get information from the participants which would not otherwise come out. They bring their knowledge of family and culture and background and they are able to enter into deep conversations with people about what it is that causes them to 
have been involved in the offending and many of the people who come before the court have suffered great social deprivation and they are victims of transgenerational trauma. But the elders and respected persons who have worked for many, many years in community bring a real depth of knowledge about those issues and can talk directly to the offenders and direct them to the appropriate support services and agencies. Now our judges have cultural training. They have real relationships with key individuals from the Victorian Aboriginal community. So they know more about the proper history and context to the offending than they would otherwise, but they also develop meaningful relationships with Aboriginal people and they come to an understanding that in Victoria we do have a very rich and diverse community. I hope that this video presentation has helped you understand the work of the County Curry Court. I thank all the people involved in the court, in particular the elders and the respected persons, for their continuing support of the court and the work that it does to provide equal access to the law. Thank you very much.